In today's video, I want to touch on compression spiral router bits, sometimes called upcut downcut bits. This is only for the ones that can plunge. This is not really meant for the ones that have a bearing on it for flush trimming. The one key flaw in these, or at least kind of thing you need to know, does not apply to the flush trim bits. So don't be worried about that if you are using one that is a flush trim bit. Now to understand what the flaw that I call the transition is here, we have to know what this is intended to do. It's intended to be both an upcut and a downcut spiral bit, leaving us with both a clean bottom and a clean top. Upcut bits, much like a drill bit, will scoop up from the bottom and leave a nice clean bottom, but they often have tear out fuzziness kind of chipping up at the top. So if you have a groove that can be seen from the sides, you can get some problematic tear out. And the downcut bit shears pulling downwards, which is great because it prevents tear out by pulling those fibers down and into the wood itself instead of up and into the air but it doesn't leave as clean of a bottom. So if for some reason you needed that bottom to be a pristine surface, that's not the best bit for you. And because both of those had problems, somebody came along and said, what if I just put both of them in a single router bit? Now, maybe it's just me, but when somebody offers me a two things in one and the price is not twice as much uh, of both of them, I'm a little skeptical. I'm always a little skeptical when the price is not each of them combined plus more. Well, you do it by having a trade-off. And the trade-off for these compression spiral bits is that there is a transition point that goes from up cut to down cut. Now that's fine as long as you know this going in. And when I shopped for this, I don't know, two months ago or something like that, nobody really disclosed this in an obvious way to me. And it's not been a problem. It's just, if you're doing a certain project or a certain need, this you may have no need for this because it can't do what you want. And the problem is that at about 3 16 of an inch down on this little guy right here, we have the upcut bit at the top, the scooping action. And then everything below that is downcut, so the shearing down. And that makes sense from a plunge. The downcut then is at the top near the surface, the upcut near the bottom. All right, all good. Well, what if you only are making a groove that's an eighth of an inch deep? You're not gonna get any of the downcut. If you're making on this one specifically anything under a 3 16 of an inch groove, you're gonna be just all upcut and you could have just gone with an upcut spiral bit. If you are making only a single pass groove, so you've got this quarter inch bit and you need to make a quarter inch wide pass and it's going 10 inches, you have to plunge at least for your first plunge over 3 16 of an inch or else you will not engage these down cut cutters along the way. You will only have the up cut if you are under that and you therefore don't get the benefit of the down cut. You're just gonna get the same tear out and you could have just used an up cut or just bought a down cut spiral bit uh, on its own. So yes, these bits do provide the best of both worlds, but only at certain depths of cut. And there are sort of ways around this. If we are doing a groove that's wider than the bit size, so let's say I'm quarter inch and I'm gonna do three eighths. I can plunge that first plunge a little bit at a time and work my way down there, but then every subsequent pass over to the one side, to the, whether that be the right or the left, whatever it is, you have to be taking more than 3 16 of an inch at a time. You don't have to take the whole thing, but with this bit specifically, it's gotta be more than 3 16 of an inch so that we engage those down cutters. That's great, that's actually very useful and it works great. But what about the other side of that cut? We don't wanna to have to go over and make a climb cut every time. Well, if you want the action from this to work correctly, you would. You would have to make your initial groove going step by step or take it in an entire plunge, then go off to the left, do a cut at a deeper depth, and then you could go off to the right, which is just, it's just not ideal. We don't wanna to have to be doing climb cuts on left and right. We usually like to pick our starting point and then cut from there. That's just traditionally the easiest way to do it. We don't like to have to go out both ways. So just be warned that if you are buying a compression spiral bit and you plan to do plunge cutting, especially if your groove is only going to be the width of this bit, there is a transition point and you will have to plunge or press down deeper than whatever that transition point is in order to get the benefit of the down cut action. One of the main reasons I bought this, not just for grooves, but was for box joints as well. I have always had a problem and I generally would choose the up cut bit because I felt that the cleanest surface I needed was where they were going to press together. But a lot of times you can get a little tear out at the end, a little chipping, a little fuzziness. 
So I wasn't thrilled with the up cup bit, though I've made plenty of box joints. So I said, let's try the compression bit. Really shines there because we're making a deep enough cut every time as long as your material is over 3 16 of an inch. So if you're doing a lot of box joints, these compression bits, while more expensive individually than an up cut bit, great option here. You will get the benefit of both. They work very well for that. If you are not taking something at a full pass plunge above whatever the transition point is, this just offers no benefit to you unless you plan to make the groove wider one way and a little bit wider the other way. So while I am very happy with this and I normally keep up cut bits around, I'm going to have to also start keeping around down cut bits for any time I don't want to plunge deeper than 3 16 of an inch, which may not be all the time or even that often. But on these quarter inch shank bits, I just don't love taking out huge chunks, uh, huge depth kind of cuts on them. They're, I don't, they're not flimsy or anything like that, but the stress point there is not amazing. That's why I really like these quarter inch shank bits where I get this hefty chunk on the end. Finding these in half inch shank quarter inch cutter, I couldn't find one, frankly. So very happy. Now that I know that there is a limitation to them, I'm still happy, but I would have liked to have known that before. So hopefully now you know, and uh, thank you for joining me today. If you know of a uh, compression bit that either has a down cut much closer to the top uh, or is a half inch shank with a quarter inch cutter, please let me know or at least point me in the direction. I would love that. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Bye. <laughs>